east to the west. From the east to the west. You and Tommy, you're the best. You and Tommy, you're the best. So, you joined the military and you decided to become a 68 Whiskey Army Combat Medic. Great, we need medics. So for this video, I'm going to be trying to give you guys as much information as I could give you so that you're better prepared when you head off to AIT. So, let's get on with the video. You just finished basic training. You're about to get on that bus and head off to Fort Sam to start off your journey to become a 68 Whiskey. That's awesome. Congratulations. So next thing in your head, you're like, well, what's happening next? First, you're going to have a long long bus drive down to Fort Sam. But don't worry, you'll have your battles there with you and the time will go by quick. 68 Whiskey Training is broken down into its separate companies. You have Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta, Echo, and Foxtrot. Now, depending on which company you land on, will dictate how your journey in Fort Sam is gonna go. Every company is different, so don't expect everything to be the same. So when you initially get there, you could become what's called a hold under. So basically, you just got there early and you're just waiting for the rest of your company to get there so you guys could begin. So in that time, usually you're just there doing just, you know, work that the sergeants or the drill sergeants might ask you to do, like paperwork or just keep the brakes clean. So when your battles get there, you guys could begin. Once the full company is there, that's when the drill sergeants will do what we like to call a shakedown. They'll take you guys to the PT field and you'll dump out everything. They're just doing this to make sure that you're not taking any contraband into the barracks. So at Fort Sam, the barracks are kind of like dorms. So it really is an upgrade from the barracks that you had at basic. It's three people to a room. If you're lucky, sometimes it's two. So once your whole company is there, your drill sergeants will assign you guys your keys. Now, this is such a big deal. Unfortunately, people lose their keys all the time. And honestly, they're really expensive. So you can't expect your drill sergeants and your sergeants just to be able to just pick up a key anytime you lose it. So most of the time, not all of you guys are going to have a key. So just be prepared you know, to give that key to someone who's really responsible. And unfortunately, you guys are going to have to you know, make sure you guys are at the right place at the right time so you're not late because your battle buddy headed off to an appointment. Once you guys get your rooms and everything is set up, this is where your journey begins. Now, in the beginning, it's going to be so slow. You're going to be going to lectures after lectures that basically is just going to tell you what you're getting yourself into. So the first boring lecture you're going to go to is how to study and how to highlight. Now, yeah, you're thinking to yourself, what? They want me to learn how to study and how to highlight? I've been going to school my whole life. Yes, but they're going to give you some tools that maybe will work for you. Honestly, some of them did work for me. And also in this lecture, this is where you're going to get your big yellow book and you're going to get a box of different color highlighters. Now, honestly, it's up to you whether you choose to use it or not. Some people did and it actually worked out for them. Now, after you get all those boring lectures out of the way, this is where it actually begins. You're going to have your first day of what we like to call EMT phase. EMT phase is where the army is trying to prepare you to get your EMT license in the civilian world. Now, EMT phase is really fun, but it's actually really tiring at the same time. You're going to be exhausted. You're gonna be waking up every day for morning PT and you're gonna go straight into class from eight in the morning to 5 p.m. You're gonna learn everything you need to learn as an EMT to take care of your patients. From medical assessments to trauma assessments, how to put your patient on a long spine board, how to do CPR and many other things. Now, EMT phase is broken down into three parts. You have your mods, you have all skills, and you have the NREMT. Your mods are basically your set of exams that you are going to take based on everything that you learned in ENT phase. Your all skills is going to be your hands-on. So basically, everything that you learned in ENT phase is going to have a hands-on skill that you are going to learn on how to treat your patient. And at the end of that, you have your NREMT, which is your national registration test to become EMT in the civilian world. Now, whiskey phase is broken down into a few phases. When you first get there, you start off as a phase four. It's a black patch with Roman numeral five on it. Now with a phase four patch, let's be honest, you're not gonna have any freedom. Your drill sergeants are gonna be your best friend. After that, depending on your company and your drill sergeants, you get phased up to phase four plus. Now honestly, all this gives you is the privilege to, to get your hair cut. And no, you're not going by yourself. You have to have your battle buddy. Cause what happens when you don't have a battle buddy in the army, you're dead. I'm just kidding. No, you're fake dead. Your drill sergeants will literally scream, where is your battle buddy? And you're gonna wish that your mommy was next to you. I'm not kidding. So back to the mods, from mod one, and you go all the way to mod four. When you get to mod four, you want to have a 75 average, because if you do, then you have the privilege of phasing up to phase five. And this is a nice, beautiful gold patch with a Roman numeral five on it. And you are going to love this patch. You are going to guard it more than you guard your cell phone. I'm not kidding you. This patch basically gives you a chunk of freedom. Not all the freedom, 
but you get a lot of freedom. Basically, depending on your drill sergeants, they will tell you, and your company, they will tell you which formation you have to show up and which one you don't have to show up. Along with that, you get your passes on the weekend to go off base. Yes, you get to go and explore, but guess what? You're not going in your nice civilian clothes and your nice hype B sneakers. No, you're going in your dress blues. Yes, your dress blues. So yeah, phase five is a little bit more freedom to breathe, but don't get too crazy. So like I said, you wanna maintain a 75 average. Just because you got your phase five, doesn't mean it can't be taken away if you dip under 75. So try to maintain that 75 if you wanna maintain that nice, smooth freedom. So yeah, moving on. You have your mods. Once you pass all your mods, then you go to all skills. All skills is a set of skills you are going, that you are going to be tested on to make sure that you know how to perform them properly. Out of all the skills, if you fail four in a row on your first go, you're going to get recycled to the company coming after you. You don't want to get recycled. It is the worst thing ever. You have to start off from day zero and it sucks. Believe me, you do not want to do it. You passed all your mods. You passed your all skills. Now it's time to take the NRAMT. Please don't panic, okay? As long as you paid attention in class, you studied, you dedicated your time, and you actually paid attention in class, you will be fine. So the NRMT is a system made up of 120 questions. Okay, so don't freak out if you made it to 120 questions and your battle buddies got like 60, 85, 90, 75. It really doesn't matter. The system determines how many questions it took for the system to know that you either passed or failed. So basically, the system is a line. You want, to try, you want to try and maintain yourself either on that line or above that line. If you go under, you're failing. So one of the things that our instructors told us in class was that if you're taking the NRAMT and you went from an easy question to like a super hard question, you have no idea what they're asking you, that's a good thing. Don't panic. That means that the system is trying to throw out harder questions to you, and that means you're actually doing a good job. You're either staying on the line or above the line. If you don't pass the NRMT on your first go, it's okay. You will have two more tries to pass it. So you finish your mods, you finish all skills, you got the, the NREMT out the way, you have officially finished EMT first. Yes, hallelujah. Now you move on to, in my opinion, the best phase, which is whiskey phase. This is your bread and butter. This is where you're gonna learn to become a 68 whiskey army combat medic. You're gonna learn how to do care under fire and tactical field care. Now, whiskey phase is broken up into two parts. You have care under fire and tactical field care. Care under fire is basically where you are caring for that soldier when bullets and bombs are flying. Tactical field care is when now you're in a safer area and you were able to do the procedures in depth. So what is care under fire? So care under fire is basically that word. You were caring under fire. You guys are running a mission and all of a sudden you got ambushed. Bullets are flying, soldiers are screaming, everyone is moving and they're carrying on that mission. All of a sudden a soldier goes down. Now, you're not gonna run out there like Rambo just because he just fell. No, there's procedures for that, right? Your battle buddy's down. You wanna make sure you at least have some kind of security so you're able to get out there and, and bring your battle buddy to a safer area to treat. Now, don't think you're gonna have full 360 security like they have in the movies. No, this is the real world. You could have five, you could have five of your battles with you to pull security. You could have one. As long as you have some kind of security to bring your battle back, it's good. Now, when you're in care under fire, you are in care under fire, so you are not taking your sweet time. You're haul assing to where your battle is. You're gonna get there, you're gonna treat any life-threatening hemorrhage. Now what I mean by life-threatening hemorrhage, my arm got blown off, my leg got blown off. Crap, everything got blown off, right? And that soldier is bleeding out, that's what you wanna treat. So in this case, you're gonna take what we call a tourniquet, and you're gonna apply that high and tight, you're gonna crank that bad boy, scream for your security, and you guys are dragging this soldier out. Now, once you're out of those bullet ranges, now, when I mean you're out of those bullet ranges, let's be honest here. You're not always going to have a building. You're not always going to have a tent, okay? You could be treating your battle behind a huge truck or the ambulance itself, right? Or a tank, anything that actually protects you from bullet. There's a difference between concealment and cover. Concealment, bullets can still go through it. Cover, you are covered from bullets actually hitting you. So this is what is called tactical field care. You are, you are away from the bullet and you are in a safer zone to treat your battle. Here is where you're actually gonna go down through your procedures. Now, let me take a step back. In whiskey phase, you are going to learn everything that you need to learn to take care of this soldier. Your instructors, which now are gonna be sergeants, by the way, not your drill sergeants, but 
actually seasoned veteran sergeants that were in the field and actually could tell you the experiences that they went through in the field, which personally was my favorite part. So in whiskey phase, it's very important that you memorize these steps. H, A, B, C. This is very important. In EMT phase, you're gonna learn A, B, C. Airway, breathing, circulation. Now in whiskey phase, we're adding the H because it's hemorrhage, airway, breathing, circulation. Why hemorrhage? Because hemorrhage is the leading cause of death in battlefield. Because you're bleeding out, you're dying, you need blood. If there is no blood, there is no soldier. So you want to stop that life-threatening bleeding before you do anything else. Because what is the point of me checking to see if you were able to breathe if you were bleeding out? Right? Makes sense. So once you drag to your battle back to tactical field care, so this is where you're going to check for any life-threatening bleeding. You're going to conduct what is called a blood sweep. So a blood sweep, you are checking from head to toe if there's any bleeding that you were not able to visually see when you were in care under fire. So in a blood sweep, they're going to teach you how to interlock your hands behind your soldier and sweep from behind the head all the way to the toes and your hands to make sure that there's no life-threatening bleeding. If you do find any bleeding, you're going to expose the wound either by ripping it, cutting it, and you're going to pack that wound with what we like to call combat gauze. Now, once you have controlled that life-threatening bleeding, wherever it may be, then you can move on to airway. And airway, this is where you're going to make sure that your soldier's airway is open, or what we like to call patent. Now, common sense. If your soldier is screaming at the top of his lungs because he's in pain, believe me, his airway is patent. So don't try to shove an MPA in his nose or an OPA in his throat because you will get the punching of a lifetime. Don't do it. But if you see that your soldier isn't responsive, then you are allowed to check to see if the airway is open. In this case, you would use two methods, the head tilt, chin lift, or the jaw thrust. Now, depending on your soldier's injuries, you want to use either or. You don't want to do the head tilt, chin lift if the soldier injured any cervical or spinal injuries because you'll do more damage already. If you open up their airway and you see they have obstructions like blood, teeth, or any kind of debris from the injuries they sustained, then you want to get that out. Once you have cleared of any of debris, then you can either insert an OPA or an MPA, depending on the situation. Any facial trauma, burns, broken nose, broken teeth, you don't want to shove in an MPA. Because this, this is all open, right? So if I put in an MPA in someone who sustained facial injuries, I could kill them. You are doing more harm than helping, right? So don't do that. Moving on to breathing, you're going to expose the chest. You're going to rip that uniform, cut it, however you need to do, to so you can see your soldier's chest. At this point, this is where you're going to see if the soldier sustained any gunshot wounds, right? So if they did sustain a gunshot wound, this is where you would put a chest seal, which you would learn in whiskey phase. Now, very important, if there is a gunshot wound, there is an exit wound. We are not the Hulk. Our bullets go in and they come out. Be diligent. Look. Actually sweep. Show your instructors that you are interested. Additionally to that, we're also going to be checking if the chest is rising and falling equally. Now what I mean rising and falling equally is that it's rising in one and lowering in one, right? We're not, we're not doing a seesaw, right? Because if you see the seesaw, that means that some traumatic injury happened. It could either be blunt force trauma from stepping on a bomb or they were shot and they have pressure from either fluid or air, right? So in this case, we're going to insert an NCD which you are going to learn in whiskey phase on how to insert. And that is going to alleviate the pressure that is in that collapsed lung. So now, your bleeding is under control, your airway is open, and your breathing is stabilized. Now we move on to circulation. This is where you're gonna check the pulse of your soldier. You're gonna check them on both wrists. Not one, both. And please, do not use your thumbs. Our thumbs have a pulse. So how are you gonna know if it's your pulse or your soldier's pulse? You can mistake it and not give the treatment that the soldier actually needs. Right. So you're going to check both of your radio pulses. If you feel that the pulse is almost absent, you're going to put in a line. Right. In whiskey phase, when you go to check the, the pulses, you're going to scream checking bilateral radio pulses. Your sergeant at this time is either going to say absent or present. So your hemorrhage is under control, your airway is patent, your breathing is stabilized, and your pulse is stabilized as well. Then you're going to move on to the rest of the body assessment where you're going to pack you're going to wrap and you're going to transport your patient based on their injuries. When I say wrapping, after you pack that wound that the soldier sustained, you were going to wrap it up, right? Because if I just put gauze and I walk away, it's gonna fall out, right? So you wanna wrap it so it, it applies enough pressure to seal in that blood so the blood coagulates and it stops bleeding. In whiskey phase, you are going to learn the nine line medevac. 
It's a sheet that basically runs down nine lines that you are going to call to transport your patient. Now in Whiskey Phase, we were only taught to memorize five lines. Line one is your grid, your location. Medevac needs to know where you're at, right? Line two is your call sign. So in our case, we were told to say medic one. Line three, basically you're gonna tell them what kind of soldier do you have? Is it urgent? Is it urgent surgical? Depending on the injuries that the soldier sustained. Line four is going to be the kind of equipment that you need. Do you need a ventilator? Do you need a hoist, right? Line five, basically you're going to say most likely Lima one because you are, because your soldier is on a litter. Now obviously if you have more than one soldier, which it will happen, obviously you are going to say Lima two, Lima three, Lima four, Lima five, and so on, depending on how many, how many soldiers need to be medevaced at that moment. Now you were able to learn all these things. The next step is to put it into play and do your CCA. Now your CCA is gonna be a front and back sheet that's gonna be super long. Don't freak out, it's possible. If I can do it, you can do it. Basically, it's everything that I explained to you and a little bit more is that your sergeant is gonna give you a scenario of something that happened to a soldier. You're not gonna know what it is in advance, so just be prepared for anything. They're gonna give you a scenario and you're gonna treat the patient based on what's going on and you're gonna follow all the steps to your CCA. Now, you got through EMT. You got through whiskey phase. Now the next step is camp bullets. Now camp bullets is honestly where you could kind of exhale a little bit, right? Cause it's not over, but you kind of got the hard part over. Cause now camp bullets is basically where you are going to put into play, but at a higher pace, right? So camp bullets is a two week camp that's broken down into two phases. You have your walking phase and you have your running phase. In your walking phase, basically, your sergeant is gonna walk you through all the stages that are broken down in camp bullets. Once walk week is over, then you're going to go into run week. This is where you're expected to do everything kind of on your own, right? You're not on your own because you're going to have your battles with you, you're going to have your team with you, but you're expected to know what to do and when to do it, right? Your sergeants are going to be there, but they're not going to be there to rub your back and run you through it. No, they're going to be there screaming at you. He's dying. Make, like, this is your time to act. Right? And it's fun, right? Because you, you get this adrenaline rush and, and you're looking all around and you see your battles running and everyone's doing, every, so, someone is sticking over here, someone is screaming because they're getting an MP over there, or someone is like, oh, dude, turn against the tight. But honestly, it's a rush and you're going to have fun. This is the time for you and your battles to just have fun and, and just put everything into practice that you learned at Whiskey Phase. This is it. This is your last moment before you actually ship off to your first unit. Right, so enjoy it, have fun, but at the same time, make sure you're doing everything how it's supposed to be. Because at the end, you're gonna do your CCA, and if you don't pass, you have to do it again. You're going to get recycled. And not starting at day zero, but you're gonna get recycled to the next company that is going into whiskey phase, and you're gonna learn everything all over again. So, make sure you actually pay attention, and you wanna learn, and you wanna do your best, because you could do it. You're gonna be tired, you're gonna be hungry, you're gonna wanna quit, don't quit. Please don't quit. There were times where I was tired and I wanted to go home. But as long as you have the will and the push and you actually want to do it, believe me, you could get through it and you, you could become the best 60 whiskey that the Army needs. Because we need medics. We are short medics. We need medics. So yeah, that was a little run through of my 68 whiskey experience at Fort Sam Houston. In my next video, I'm going to be talking about the aid bag, the glorious aid bag. I'm going to be talking to you guys about the ins and out of the aid bag, how most likely you're going to have it laid out when you get to 68 Whiskey training, and some useful tips that I personally do. So when I have to open up that bad boy, I know where everything is and I can easily access it and get to work. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Now leave a comment down below if you guys would like me to make a video about the individual skills you will go through at EMT phase and at Whiskey phase which honestly, I think it'll be very helpful. So yeah, thank you guys for watching and see you guys next video.